Manchester United are a footballing dynasty. Arguably the biggest football club on earth, United have won more trophies than any other English club and it's often claimed that their global fan base is larger than even that of Real Madrid and Barcelona. When one thinks of the men who made Manchester United, there's no lack of credible candidates. Sir Matt Busby, who brought the Busby Babes to the world and brought 13 trophies to Old Trafford, Sir Bobby Charlton, who drove Manchester United forward and inspired them to glory even in the aftermath and as a survivor of the Munich Air Disaster, and Sir Alex Ferguson, who returned the Red Devils to glory and embarked upon 27 years of unparalleled success at the so-called Theatre of Dreams. Those three would be the first to spring to most people's minds, but they're just the sirs. We haven't even scratched the surface with the likes of Ernest Mangnall, Billy Meredith, James Gibson, George Best, Dennis Law, Roy Keane, Eric Cantona, or Ryan Giggs. One name which probably wouldn't spring to a lot of people's minds is Louis Rocker, but one can make an incredibly compelling case for Rocker being the single most important individual in the history of Manchester United Football Club. And today, we're going to talk about why. I first came across the name of Louis Rocker whilst writing and researching for my book about Neil Franklin. That's right, I've written a book, and yes, it is as brilliant as you'd expect. In all seriousness, if you're a fan of HITC7s, you'll probably really enjoy it, and there is a link to my website where you can pre-order a copy in the video description. Anyhow, Rocker features in the book because he predicted that Franklin would have a bright future in the game. As far as Franklin was concerned, this was the greatest vindication of his ability at youth level, and after a bit of digging, it was easy to see why. Louis Rocker was one of the finest talent spotters the sport of football has ever seen. The son of Italian ice cream purveyors who had emigrated to England in the 1870s, Louis was born in Manchester in 1882. At the age of eight, he took a job as a tea boy at Bank Street Stadium, the home of Manchester United prior to their move to Old Trafford although the club were known as Newton Heath at the time. A handy player himself, but not good enough to turn professional, Rocker later turned out for Newton Heath's third team and occasionally the reserve side. By this stage, Rocker had moved on from his days as a humble t-boy and was now responsible for looking after the first team players' kits and boots. Kit man later became groundsman and as the years passed by, the football mad ice cream manufacturer became part of the furniture at Bank Street. In 1902, the club was saved from financial troubles by local brewer, John Henry Davies. Davies changed the club's colours from green and gold to red and white, and soon stated his intention to change the club's name from Newton Heath to something else. A meeting was to be held where names like Manchester Celtic and Manchester Central were suggested, but neither were particularly popular. It was at this point that a 19-year-old rocker claims he piped up and said, what about Manchester United? If Rocker's claims are correct, he was the man behind United's new name, but his influence was to extend far beyond mere nomenclature in the years that followed. In 1907, aged 24, Rocker was appointed as United's chief scout. It has been claimed that the second generation Italian immigrant held every single role possible at the club, but nowhere was his impact more significant and still felt to this day as it was in this role. Rocker was a football obsessive who was relentless in his pursuit of talent. Every Monday morning, a mound of local newspapers would be delivered to his office. Rocker would trawl through the reports on junior football, making a note of the names that cropped up. If a name featured regularly, Rocker would go and watch the youngster play, or at least send someone else to do so. A devout Catholic, Rocker's scouting network was made up largely of football-loving priests who happy to give up their time to try and help Manchester United discover Britain's next footballing star. In addition to his scouting work, Rocker also set up Manchester United Junior Athletic Club, better known as United Juniors, who were the club's very first academy. Rocker saw this as a way of producing a conveyor belt of talent for the first team, and when one thinks of the relationship between Manchester United's first team and its academy in the years that followed, it's difficult to underplay the significance of Rocker's creation. Although Louis Rocker was incredibly devoted to Manchester United and the youth recruitment and team he had created, he also had a business to run. In 1911, four years after being appointed Chief Scout, Rocker took over the family ice cream business. He never let this get in the way of bringing young players to Old Trafford though, and on one occasion, the two roles collided. Rocker made the short journey to Stockport County in 1927 with the intentions of signing youngster Huey McLennan. He arrived at Edgeley Park to find Stockport were in a bit of financial trouble, 
and the cunning rocker used this to his advantage. The next day, McLenahan was a Manchester United player. The transfer fee? Four freezers of ice cream. McLenahan was 18 at the time and had never played a first team game for Stockport. He went on to make more than 100 appearances over nine years at Manchester United. Under Rocker's stewardship, Manchester United's scouting and recruitment system became the envy of the nation. Rocker himself spotted talents such as Johnny Carey and Stan Pearson, who would go on to become United legends, as well as future Bogotá bandit Charlie Mitten. In 1931, Manchester United found themselves in bother once again. Walter Crickmere took over first team managerial duties, and Rocker, who now had a reputation as United's go-to fixer, as well as being a fantastic talent spotter, was handed another new role, this time as assistant manager. The problems ran deeper than struggles on the pitch though, United needed money, and fast. Rocker was tasked with finding the club an investor, and his search took him to the door of businessman James W. Gibson. Gibson had made his money in the clothing industry, but he was a passionate Mancunian, and willing to give up some of his hard-earned wealth to help the struggling local football team. Rocker secured an initial investment of £2,000 from Gibson, but that was to be just the start. The businessman became Manchester United's owner in December 1931, investing around £40,000 in the club during the Great Depression, funding the rebuilding of Old Trafford following its destruction during World War II, and heavily funding the official United Youth Academy that went on to produce the Busby Babes. Gibson would own Manchester United for the next 20 years, up until his death in 1951. You may now already be convinced that Louis Rocker is the single most important figure in the history of Manchester United, but there is one rather significant piece of the puzzle we are yet to explore. The great Sir Matt Busby. The name Busby may now be synonymous with all things Manchester United, but at the end of the Second World War, Busby had played for just two clubs, Liverpool and Manchester City. A fantastic half-back in his playing days and a footballing idealist, Busby was destined for a career in management. His club Liverpool had offered him a job as manager, but Busby was unhappy that he wouldn't have full control over transfers, the youth team and the day-to-day -day running of the club. Meanwhile, Manchester United were in desperate need of a manager. A meeting was called to try to put together some candidates and Louis Rocker had one name in mind. The board knew Busby had been offered the job at Liverpool, but Rocker asked them to leave it to him. Rocker and Busby were old friends. Rocker had wanted to bring Busby to Old Trafford from Manchester City when he was 20, but United couldn't afford the £150 transfer fee. They also knew each other from both being members of the Manchester Catholic Sportsman's Club, with Busby a devout Catholic like Rocker. In December 1944, Busby received the following letter from Rocker. Dear Matt, No doubt you will be surprised to get this letter from your old pal Louis. Well Matt, I have been trying for the past month to find you and not having your reg address, I could not trust a letter going to Liverpool, as what I have to say is so important. I don't know if you have considered about what you are going to do when war is over, but I have a great job for you if you are willing to take it on. Will you get into touch with me at the above address and when you do I can explain things to you better when I know there will be no danger of interception. Now Matt, I hope this is plain to you. You see, I have not forgotten my old friend either in my prayers or in your future welfare. I hope your good wife and family are all well and please God, you will soon be home to join the happy circle. Wishing you a very happy Christmas and a lucky new year. With all God's blessings in you and yours, your old pal, Louis Rocker. Busby got the letter, but he knew that he held all the cards, and he demanded that the United board give him all the freedom that Liverpool weren't offering him. A manager being afforded such control was unprecedented in the English game, but United were desperate, so they agreed. Matt Busby became Manchester United's manager in October 1945. He would remain in that role for the next 24 years, during which time he gave the world the Busby Babes, many of whom were killed in the Munich air disaster, before overseeing United's recovery from that heartbreak, winning 13 trophies in the process, including five first division titles, and becoming the first English club to get their hands on the European Cup. In summary, Rocker held just about every role possible at Manchester United. He saved them from financial implosion, brought them a passionate and wealthy owner, recruited some of the most talented youngsters in the country, founded the most successful academy in English football, and brought one of the country's most celebrated managers to Old Trafford. Oh, and he might just have given them their name as well. 
In the 1948 FA Cup final, Manchester United won their first FA Cup for 39 years, and only the second in their history. Seven of United's starting 11 that day had been brought to the club by Louis Rocker and the scouting network that he had implemented. It's difficult to tell where Manchester United would be today were it not for the football-obsessed gelato connoisseur, but it's quite possible they wouldn't be here at all. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, let us know your thoughts in the comments and any future video ideas you'd like to see from me. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you enjoy our content.